Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Let's work from the end to the beginning of this perfect waterproofing treatment of your basement or foundation wall. So out here at the pump discharge, what we're going to do is going to come to a 3 inch 90 and there'll be a, a grate on the top. But to make that connection from this Schedule 40 PVC to the thin wall PVC, you do need some type of adapter. And we call this a donut, but it's a bushing to go from Schedule 40 PVC that slides in here and the outer is for thin wall PVC and it yeah and everything works really simply we're going to glue it all up but I'll just show you <clears throat> put it together and this piece slides tight inside and then the grate goes on the top just that simple okay so we're getting ready to double up our sump basin and there's a couple of ways to do this to, to pick out your spot if you can see that little indentation right there is for reinforcement but I'm going to cut it off right below that or maybe right above that maybe right above this and that way when I put this together it slides together uh, I can drill the inlet hole because it's going to be down here it's quite deep so let's go ahead and cut that off going to be our riser that we put into the pit. Let's take a look. So you can see the first pit. We're going to dig that deeper and then we'll take the second pit. We'll line that up. And you can see how much deeper our pit is now because once we install it, actually this will probably, well, this will probably be the inlet line coming in down here. That's the original pit. But we're going to go down another foot, foot and a half, and that way we've got room for the water to accumulate and the sump pump can easily lift that water up and out. The way we secure it is, I've got roofing tape, which is a really waterproof tape. We're gonna screw this together all the way around, and then we use our roofing tape, we put that around here, it makes a really nice seal, and nothing will get inside of it. Let's set up the Zoller M98. It starts with a male threaded inch and a half adapter. I've already screwed that in. There's a port and a slot, you just screw it right in. Next, we're gonna put a small riser on here, just to get above this bar, and then we'll put the check valve on here. But we do need to drill a 3 16 inch hole. <laughs> into the pipe as a pressure relief. So now we're gonna glue this first piece on, our first riser. Good amount of PVC cement, both pipe and fitting. Push it in and hold it, just for a second. That's nice and secure. Next, we're gonna put on our check valve. And this is um, a valve that only allows water to flow one way. And if you can see those arrows, it tells me the direction of flow. We're gonna loosen up this first stainless steel clamp and put this first piece on. And then we'll tighten that up. We need to loosen up a little bit more. Just as tight as your handy dandy drill can do it. 5 16 inch bit is what holds this together. This one will loosen up because we're going to continue the riser when we put it down the sump basin. But the sump pump sets up that quick. Again, make sure that your arrows are pointing upwards or whatever you've got there. It might say flow. Make sure you're going the right direction. Okay, Joe's painting the wall with the liquid rubber. I'm going to go ahead and start backfilling some of this and you know, cover up the discharge line as it goes around and get some of this going here. We need to get this job finished. We're almost there, but you know you start getting tired towards the end. So we're sealing up that wall with the blackjack number 57. It's called liquid rubber, but really it's a damp proofing compound. And what it does is when it dries, it creates a, a rubber seal, you know, on whatever you put it on. It's really designed for a roof or for a brand new build, you know, block wall. So again, once we cleaned off that footer, the footer wall, the foundation wall, we can easily apply this to it. And it sticks really good. Once it dries, it's a nice permanent shell to help keep that water from penetrating the block. But remember, the secret is you have to have drainage. So that's where the footer pipe comes in. 
So while Joe's finishing up that liquid rubber the application, we just use a brush and we paint it on there, put it on really thick. And um, while he's doing that, we'll go ahead and, or I'll go ahead and put this footer pipe in. Remember what this is. This is four inch perforated pipe surrounded by styrofoam peanuts and it's encased in a fabric. These peanuts are not the, like packing peanuts. These are very dense pieces of styrofoam and water does not make them smushy at all. And they also handle the weight of putting all this backfill. You can see how much backfill there is. It'll handle that weight no problem. It works great in sandy soil. It works even better in clay. So if you're going to do this, if you want to do gravel perforated pipe, that's great. But I've been doing this here now for a little over five years. Not a single problem. It works really good. Remember the secret though. You've got to be down at footer level. You have to be below the floor. You must have drainage in order for this to stay dry. Liquid rubber or all kinds of compounds. I get many comments about you should use this and that. You know what? That's all great. We use Blackjack 57. That's what we use and we don't have any problems. It works fine. Um, but the real secret again is getting footer pipe. People call it a French drain but footer pipe along and below that floor. Okay so we're coming around to the corner where the sump pump is. You can see the nice liquid rubber coat when that you know hardens it's already hardening it hardens pretty quick um, now I'm laying the easy flow I already backfilled a little bit at the other end but looking really good so that stuff's really it did a great job of covering that uh, old stucco and broken mortar things that were down there beautiful job so but again the key is the drainage we're putting that in we're coming around the corner and backfilling we'll hook it up to the sump basin in just a second Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start peeling this stuff that they have on the wall off of here. And, you know, if it may not all come off, but our rubber, as long as we can get most of it off of there, it's all going to be good because it'll cover and coat it and hold, you know, ours will stick on there really well. But yeah, you can see water could get back up underneath of this type of a product. Okay, so excavation is moving along pretty well. Um, just now getting down to the footer. And you can see all the gravel that's been laid down here. This was the original gravel. So this was a little different video, but let's go over the key points. Number one, we've got to get down to the footer level in order to have a system that works properly. When you lay your footer pipe, it must be at the footer and below the floor for the system to work. The second key point is seal the wall with liquid rubber. Blackjack number 57 is what I like to use. Combination of putting the footer pipe and sealing your foundation wall is what will solve your problem. If you have the negative grade back towards your house or you have a very flat property, you're probably going to need a sump pump. So we install the sump pump here. And finally, we've got our discharge. Make sure you have a good discharge to remove the water. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. So I know my videos are sometimes boring. Let's go ahead and take a look at this neighborhood as we drive out. I'll just let the camera run. This is a gated community. Looks like they're about half acre lots, maybe three quarters of an acre. Huge houses, just beautiful. Central Florida, absolutely gorgeous. See the old oaks, pin oaks. And there's also live oaks here, which are two, three hundred years old. Really cool. Very well manicured area. And what's neat about, what I like about it is you can see that oak and then you see the accent palm. Um, those are small pygmy date palms, just really neat. And of course they've got the jasmine uh, coming up right over here. Just little things that make you know you're in Florida. <laughs> Otherwise you wouldn't know.
really likes this White House. It is pretty, it's very stately. And it's uh, huge, it's big. This is a gated community we're coming up to. driving but I'm talking anyway. Spanish uh, Spanish moss in the trees. That's North Florida. That moss doesn't survive down in South Florida for some reason. That was brought over here by the Spanish to help erosion, you know, erosion control and it just went out of control and now it's clear up into Georgia and Alabama as well. It's in South Carolina too.